Welcome. This is a meeting of the Town of Deerfield Planning Board on Monday, March 7th, 2022. Welcome. And um, I will ask Andrea Liebson to read our introductory paragraph here. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the, gov with the Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation details noted. So there's a way to join the Zoom meeting. There's an ID number and there's a dial-in phone number. Thank you, Andrea. And when, when would we have expected on uh, March 20th, 2020 that we would still be doing this? All right, um, I will identify board members in attendance and this time let's go in reverse order. So um, Kathy Wotroba, I know Kathy is not able to join us this evening. Uh, Kathy Sylvester. Uh, here. Denise Mason. Denise Mason here. Andrew Liebson. Andrew Liebson here. And Mary Cloutier. And Mary Cloutier here. And Rachel Blaine. You're muted, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Thumbs up, Rachel is here. Looks like they're here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I will um, apologize for my uh, poor agenda management today. Um, I was trying something new with um, these times and the agenda has been altered a bit. So I apologize if we scoot forward or slide back a little bit. Um, next time I won't be including the, the times. Um, let's see, minutes. Uh, Rachel, do you want to... Um, uh, I don't know if you've had any feedback for any minutes. Otherwise, we will. Uh, we have the minutes for January third, twenty twenty-two. Uh, maybe we can have a motion to accept, and then we can see if there's any discussion. I make a motion to accept the minutes and a second. That a second. Was, and I believe um, Jennifer, you're saying that we need to identify ourselves every time we speak. Yes, yeah. for anybody that's in person, I need to to. So oh, ironic. Yeah. Anybody that's in person, please say who you're, who's speaking because I can't tell. So Denise Mason, I make a motion to accept the minutes of January 3rd. Andrea Leaps and I second. Is there any discussion? Uh, all those, let's see, in favor, uh, Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Denise Mason. Denise Mason, yes. Andrea Leapson. Andrea Leapson, yes. And Mary Cloutier. And Mary Cloutier, yes. And Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, yes. And Annalie Wolf Cool, yes. So approved unanimously. And then uh, the agenda also, I had an error with the date of the um, February meeting. It was February 7th, not the 3rd. Um, so may I have a motion to accept the minutes of February 7th? Kathy Sylvester, I make a motion to accept the minutes of February 7th, 2022. Thank you. Denise Mason, I second that. Uh, any discussion? All right, Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Denise Mason. Denise Mason, yes. Andrea Liebson. Andrea Liebson, yes. And Mary Cloutier. And Mary Cloutier, yes. And Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, yes. Thank you very much. All right, uh, we have not had any ANRs uh, submitted for this meeting. Uh, so we'll go forward with old business. And um, I will make note that um, we did uh, submit our annual report for fiscal year 21 with a uh, big thank you to Denise Mason for working hard on that. Thank you, Denise. And Adelaide. <laughs> and you can read it in the uh, town meeting warrant and book 
booklet when it comes out to our town meeting in April. Um, all righty. Um, we did distribute our planning board roles and responsibilities. Um, somewhat self-explanatory, certainly at the beginning, um, through a number of uh, webinars that I've attended and whatnot, um, we sort of buffed up what the roles of the planning board are according to our Deerfield laws, our Massachusetts general laws, um, and um, those I think are fairly non negotiable. Um, excuse me, otherwise, um, for the planning board officers, I have talked with the officers, um, although we've filled it out a little bit since some of those conversations, and then the planning board members talked with some of you about that, and then also have talked with um, members, uh, Jen Gannett, excuse me, <coughs> and Sue Burlett and um, Bob Walden about uh, the building assistant and the assistant town administrator um, duty. So um, maybe what we could do is again, have a motion to accept and second, and then we can have some discussion on those um, roles and responsibilities. Chair Kathy Sylvester, I make a motion to accept uh, the Town of Deerfield Planning Board role and responsibilities, board members and support staff. Thank you. A second, please. Andrea Liebson, I second that. Thank you, Andrea. So discussion, maybe we can start with, um, for what it's worth, the responsibilities of the planning board as stated in the various state and Deerfield regulations. Um, does anyone have any questions about that? Yes, Jen. Um, there, the duties as stated in Deerfield bylaw section 37, Casey made a note that said under the one, two, three, four, fifth little bullet point, she would like it to say not including confidential information. Oh, excellent, of course. Uh, the fifth bullet down, it was have access to public documents or information in the possession of any town official or department, not including confidential information. I would think that would be implied, but I'm glad to state it. <clears throat> yep. she, she, she gave me a list of- Absolutely, notes. absolutely. Oh. <clears throat> Other suggestions? Not on this page. All right, so then we go to chair, vice chair, and clerk. Any um, questions or suggestions? I, I have mentioned to some degree with, with Rachel as clerk as she was uh, voted halfway through the term as interim clerk. So some of these are happening for her and some aren't, but um, these going forward, certainly when we have our next election in June. So for example, the draft of the planning board submission to the annual town report. Yeah, for example. Uh <laughs> Which I didn't do. And also drafting decisions has always been a tremendous, like that gives me heebie-jeebies. And I think that, that we need to look at that together um, because drafting decisions isn't, mm, we need more templates for that. We need more of a guidance for that. So it may be that it's the job of the clerk to, mm, you know, I'd like to use the word shepherd the drafting of them. Um, because I don't know that the clerk just jumps in with that. I, I remember it being completely stumped with the most simple, with when you first came on, Jen, and you ended up drafting it. I mean, come on, it's just daunting. And I had been on the board for a while and read a number of drafted decisions, but we had never, we never did them. Pat did them all. So <clears throat> I'd like to just throw that out that that's not, I don't want to back off of it, but I also just think it takes more expertise then, or more, yeah, expertise. Yeah. General knowledge about how to do those things. Yes, we used to have assistance from a- um, For FERCOG. Mission from okay. FERCOG, yes. Yeah. Can, I make, can yes. I make a suggestion? Okay. Yes, so, Denise. Okay, since Annalie and I did this, what I did, and I did it last year, 
I mean, we both did it. Annalise started, and I put it into a narrative form. So, what? Kind of like so a planet. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. <laughs> um, I jumped ahead. And actually, Rachel. Um, I have started those conversations with Jen, and I'm meeting some with uh, Subralette tomorrow to find what sort of templates we do yeah. have for yeah. drafting the decisions. Uh -huh. So I wonder if there is a way that we could craft what this states, because I mean, the way it is right now without a, a planning technician, Sue is- It is ours. Yeah, yeah. Sue's been sort of- flying blind and getting a lot of assistance from Jen and um, probably from Lisa, so. Well, everything has to go by Lisa. That's the issue of, and I think what I learned from not doing that one was that a, a template's really good, but really understanding what is in that template and how it works and where the pieces are, I, I, I knew enough to kind of like muck my way through it, but it wasn't going to be right. And it was going to then take somebody else a ton of time to unmuck it. And, um, and then it goes to, you know, then it may need to go to Lisa. So it's not that a, a lawyer doesn't need to draft a decision per se. Um, anyway, sorry. Stop. Jennifer. Well, I think that, you know, using a template that, that, Perhaps it starts with Sue Burlot putting in some of the uh, stuff. This is when it was um, application came in, and this was what uh, was was voted. I mean, the thing is, is that we need to have all of those meetings materials together in one place so that it's easy. You're not digging for them. You're not trying to look. Well, when was it put in the paper? And when was the second time it went in the paper? And what was the vote for each one of right. um, you know, the points of the decision? And then who said what? And this is where the clerk comes in in, 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 in her job is, is who voted for what and who, who said what? Because that needs to be part of that decision. That's yeah, okay. that is really Absolutely. challenging. Perhaps what we need to do is um, have a little bit more research first on what happens with actually drafting decisions, because <clears throat> at this point, I mean, what was actually in, I think even the previous um, 2011, um, well, maybe not, uh, planning board roles and responsibilities, it was a statement that the, you know, that the assistant, not Jen, but another assistant would process planning board decisions and well, what does that mean? So maybe. Well, the decisions came to her. Well, the, the already yeah. So when the decision comes to the assistant, then then that you know you take it and you stamp it in at the clerk's office, and then you wait the twenty one days and you notify the um, applicant that they need to pick up the decision and file it at the registry of deeds, and you know, and, and but that was all after it was written. After after it's written. So the processing is different than actually drafting or writing the decision with all of the information in it. And the other thing that is important that we can discuss maybe, I don't know, tonight or another night is conditions. So, you know, what are you supposed to be looking for? What are things that are um, good to, what are sort of standard conditions and what are other things that you need to think about for the future, because somebody 50 years from now is going to dig up this decision. Yeah. Right. Or is that? Right. Right. Well, perhaps what we can do is Rachel, when you get back, I mean, I'm meeting with Sue tomorrow mm -hmm. and I can start gathering some of the at least the materials of some, what some of the decisions have looked like. And then maybe the three of us, maybe with Jennifer can actually have a conversation. We have a, we have a, we have a perfect example right now on our in our, in front of us with the North Main Street Park and Lincoln. So I think as we go along and we're gathering all the information, we've got each of the you know notes from the um, and so we make a file and maybe we get Sue to help us make that file so that when it comes time to draft the decision, we've got enough information there so that. And again, I, I'm just going to go back, though, that I feel very uncomfortable being the person who's in charge of drafting a decision. But at least at that point, we maybe 
have a consultant or somebody who can help us put that together because that'll be a big one. It'll be more than the last one was a driveway beside the Yankee cam candle, as far as I can remember, the Yankee candle, that parking lot. <laughs> right. I think we're all um, on the same wavelength in terms of um, there needs to be some more work on this. So there might be two ways of going about it. One is that we can just table um, approving the entire uh, roles and responsibilities until we figure that out. Um, we could also just <laughs> take the whole decision piece off of it. Or thirdly, I guess, um, try to. Well, is there some way of saying that that clerk is in charge of, because I, I do think the clerk is in charge of gathering materials that and um, information to a secure a quality, you know, to secure the information, to gather the information necessary for. Uh, um, well, I, yeah, I'm not certain that you would be the one who's responsible for gathering all of the minutes and all of the votes and I don't know. Yeah, but that's, that is actually, that is exactly what the clerk does. You know, I mean, that's, the clerk has all that information and also works with the, then the building assistant to get what she has or he has, whoever that person is going to be. And, um, and I think that if you put that person in charge of that, then you're come that much closer to, you just still haven't decided who's going to write the decision, <laughs> but you, but you put the person who's sitting with the, the information in front of them or should have the information in front of them. You're putting them in charge of at least gathering the information that will make that so much easier to write for somebody who knows how to do the, that, so how would you say that so gather the information necessary to um to write the decision and that may mean sitting down with a billing assistant that may mean doing a little extra but it also means going through the notes minutes etc so that, that puts it a little closer to the clerk but it doesn't put it on the clerk to write the decision which is the piece that i'm the most uncomfortable with just and i don't know i and mary i mean it, it just feels like very daunting. Did you write that? I don't know. Anyway, no. No, so I'm not sure how I escaped this. Well, we haven't had a major decision since that parking right next to to uh, Yankee Candle. Um, Can I ask? Well, this is Andrea. I have, I have a question. Yes, so Andrea. for for um, try to still try to. I'm sorry for um for clarity for right now. So the annual town report. It's different. Oh, it's different. So that totally. has been completed for this year. Correct. By other people. By other people. <laughs> okay, exactly. By, by Denise, which is, yay, Denise, thank you. <laughs> and so we are and that really should be the clerk. Again, the clerk has the information in front of them. So, you know, these are the things. So the clerk has that. Everybody has the notes. So right. Denise right. had the notes, so she can do all of that. And that's wonderful. But it, it, it is the clerk's job. Right. So my, All did it for years. Right. My or question really is, are we are we set for what we need to have in the annual time yes. warrant for this year? Yes. So that regardless of who should have written it. Yes. Done. Check. The, the, the annual town report. Yes. That's done. That's done. And it will be it, it'll be included in yes. the warrant. Yes. OK, right. right. But right now, it says that the clerk does that. The clerk did not do that. Correct. correct. I'm just making sure I, I understand. So now we've been what we've been really been talking about is the draft, the decisions. Correct. Okay. So my, my point was we are okay for this year for what we need to have done for the um, annual town meeting. Correct. Correct. So the question, uh, I guess, um, Rachel, you were starting to propose that the wording for this could be gather next necessary inform gather information necessary for drafting decisions of board actions. And it yes. becomes a question as to how that decision gets drafted. We, 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 haven't, we haven't put it in there yet, but I, I feel like if you're, I mean, you can put it in the clerk's ha hands. I'm just, <laughs> the, the last time that was, I, I, I wasn't even the clerk. Uh, it well, was just the last time that came up, it was horrifying. And, and Tony was he kept waiting and waiting and waiting, and it's bad. And I didn't do it last time either, either. Uh, Annalie and Denise did it. And the amount of work that the clerk- No, 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 we're back. 
No. So not the town report. No. This we haven't had a decision with the, this current. We haven't had a decision. Well, okay. I guess I, I guess we'll have one. They're, they're very different. There's a crazy amount of work. Like it's a little disproportionate. <laughs> it's a, like a curse. I'm just saying, like that. If we're looking at the roles and responsibilities, it. It's disproportionate. That's all I'm going to say. Denise, thank you. Jen, thank you, Mary. Jen Jennifer? Well, I was just thinking since it seems that, you know, we're very green board and maybe to put in here is that we are. Um, well, and I just, I just really, I'd like to strike that. We're not that green. It's not about being green because it, and the years that, in the years that I have been on the board, we've never written the decision. The board has never written decisions. Well, that's what I mean. To writing the decision, we're talking about decisions. So I'm like, when when we're so I'm just making the suggestion that okay. we put in that the that the gathering of information and the writing of the draft. I mean, it it's almost like you need to take that out because if it stays in there, because we're going to make a lot of changes in the next few months. I hope. So putting that in there doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Maybe it just says gathering the information for the special permits is the job of the clerk and not have anything about what's, who's writing it because we don't know yet. Either we're gonna have a planner or we're gonna have to write it all as a board and with staff um, together and then bring it to a meeting to discuss it and write it in a meeting and to be like, okay, here's the template. It's Sue has filled in X. Let's all fill in this as we go along and write the decision together in an, in an open meeting because then we can fill it in as a board and it's not put sure on we want to write. Excuse me, Rachel. I'm not sure we write it as a, as a group. I just think that the, gap, the information needs to be gathered and somebody who's adept, who's this is what they do in writing a decision, writes it. Well, and and uh, so we get a consultant for it. I don't. I I, I think this is a pure and simple, easy consultancy. I, I just don't think that something that goes on the record should come from somebody, you know, who has a a master's degree in teaching, or, or you know, whatever. I mean, I, I and I'm I've been on the board for a long time. No, not you know, we didn't write the the, the decisions. So we should get somebody to write the decisions and somebody should gather the information. And if that's the clerk, that's the clerk. But I don't, I, I'm kind of standing with this. I, I don't see that that is. It sounds like what we have um, talked about is uh, adjusting this to say, gather necessary information necessary, for, gather information necessary for drafting the decisions. Um, and then that's under the clerk, under the building assistance, it says process planning board decisions. In both situations, there's a little bit of loosey-goosey with who's writing it, who, what does what processing mean? But at this point, maybe this is fine for going forward, and this is a fluid document, and at other that's points, right. it can be revised. So take Denise? those. Okay. Okay. I think it leaves a little bit in the clerk. I think it leaves a little bit for the board. But the bottom line is the only decisions I have ever read are the ones that we've made. Okay. So that's a really limited group of decisions. I mean, I'm just not that first. Thank you, Denise. Okay, I'm not talking about who's gonna write the decision. I, obviously we cannot decide that tonight. What I wanna talk about is gathering the information. If we know we have to write a decision, that this is the same thing that sort of happened with the, our annual report. It's not all at the end, okay, let's gather the information. When we know we're gonna to have to do it, you look at the minutes, circle anything pertinent to that decision, and let's gather the information as we go along so it's not a big mess. I know it sounds simple, but I know how these things work. It's like all of a sudden, you know, everyone panics and, and get, gathers the information. Sort of the same thing happened with the how, annual right. report. Right, or however the clerks, method is, but that's a good way to go about well, it. Right. Let's make our life easier. Right. All right. So if we adjust that last bullet point to be gather information mm -hmm. necessary for drafting decisions of board actions uh, for review by the chair and board and processing by um, building assistant, the chair and board and others as necessary. 
How does that sound? Let me say that whole thing. <laughs> Gather information necessary for drafting decisions of board actions, such as parentheses, for review by the chair, the board, others as necessary, and processing by building assistant. Because we've said then in under building assistant that the building assistant processes in the um, decisions, which I think is all that posting stuff. Does that sound reasonable? Okay. So, I mean, it sounds like we're gathering the information. Someone's processing. I'm not sure who's making. Well, we're leaving that There's out. still a crevice <laughs> in between <laughs> gathering and processing. And, I, and, and until we have a stronger sense of what that is. Um, we're leaving yeah. a loophole. Yeah. But we're leaving but ourselves I mean, open. I mean, what we were working with from uh, December 5th of 2011 had a whole lot of loopholes. So. Oh, sure, <laughs> exactly. I think this is very, the, the, clar the clarity that we're offering is as much clarity as we can do right now. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I hear Anne Mary, like, you know, right, and Denise is pointing out, absolutely, she and, and Annalie worked hard on this yearly report, which is a really important piece of information for the town and for us kind of moving forward, keeping them on, but that's a lot. Some years it's a whole lot. So may I, okay. may I ask about the previous yes. bullet point then again? Andrea, the, the previous bullet this point. This is Andrea, I'm sorry. With, about the plan, about the annual town report. Is that still a clerk responsibility? And given that it wasn't done by the clerk this year, is that the appropriate place well, where it should be? Well, we had a transition. Yeah, it was, it was because... That was why, because we because did of the it last year. The clerk didn't know they, you know, this year. Okay. So it, this is we just went forward. Not in place yet until we accept it. So, okay. Another, another, Correct. Another suggestion for that. People can do what they want to do, but my suggestion is, and I, I looked at how I asked Annalie did. Um, she gave uh, minutes from each month, each meeting, each month. So I looked at all of them, then I looked at last year's report, and I looked at the way Select Board did it month by month. So I picked the highlights from each month and put it down. So it made it a lot easier. So I think that could be done okay. month by month. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, good. Yeah. Well, because Thank it you. was a lot of work at the end. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so again, recognizing that there may be uh, pieces, more pieces of this that will need to be adapted as we move forward. Um, are we comfortable with, uh, I can call the question now and have a vote on this now and then <clears throat> we'll see where it lies. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> uh, Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Denise Mason. Denise Mason, yes. Andrea Liebson. Andrea Liebson, yes, as long as the modifications are. Yes, with the modifications, yes. correct. And Mary Cloutier. And Mary Cloutier, yes. And Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, yes. Thank you. Um, I think that was an active and fun discussion. I think we do have some more potentially um, interesting discussions in the rest of our agenda, and so. I will ask everyone if we can kind of um, slow down a bit and um, I'll try to recognize uh, people as they vote. Jennifer? Did you, did you just vote on this entire document or just that section? The entire document. Okay, so. With two modifications. Correct. One. There were other things, remember I told you Casey made notes Oh, no, but, well, so what are the additional the, suggestions? Um, she didn't write it on here, but she did tell me about it under members where it says all members shall appear at all times to the following. And it said the Deerfield Code of Conduct, Massachusetts open meeting law. So there are other um, 
conflict of interest law. There are other things like the sexual harassment. There's a, there's a few other. So she listed. She add them. Pardon me. She wanted to add them. Yes, but I was thinking maybe we could write something that was a little bit more general about anything that go. You know. To be honest, a list there would be super helpful. <laughs> Um, because then we all know what we need to check off as we go along. I think both Kathy Wachoba and I got caught with our, like, without our, mm, uh, what was it? The, we, we've got it, but the disclosure of campaign resources or whatever it was like there, that these, that might be helpful to have that list. So it needs, to be, it needs to be added then, um, which I don't have a complete list. She just mentioned it on when reading it the other day, what she did write on the last page, um, she wanted the second bullet on the last page, it says process applications for special permit. And she wanted to write assist ATA for applications on special permit stormwater permits. She wants me to be added there as to assist her. So she's assisting you in the processing? Assisting the ATA with processing applications. Is that how it would be? Yeah, that's what she, she wanted. And then put processing planning board decisions in, in the ATA bucket. Assist, yeah. That I, that it says she, I don't know her. I mean, it's, it says it assist ATA. Right, but that means that would move the processing to the ATA. I think she wants me to help her with the so processing. That, so, so process so under ATA it would say assist building assistant with processing. You see what I'm saying? It's got to sit one place and have the other person assist. You can't have two assists. You got one person pushing. Yeah, so through. I'm going to assist her in doing them. So she'll do them, but then I'll help her and look at it before it goes any further. So it's an assistant, it's, a, an, it's an addition to assistant town administrator. Okay, so this would be two additions and one we don't really have the full details on, which is the members shall adhere to the following and then the list of things that we have to do. <laughs> Open meeting laws, sure. Public records law, sure. Conflict of interest law, but then we did the training, sexual, um, we do uh, ethics training each year, all those. It's not a bad thing to list out. So you've kind of got it on your head that you know. So everybody does what we're the, talking about right yeah. here is that under administrative assistant, it would say assist building assistant with processing Correct. applications. And then under building assistant, it says process the applications. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else, Jen? Um, so that's really the only suggestion here since we don't have other specific um, words. Yeah. Okay. And then she did list something else, but she's asking me if I want to do this and I don't. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll put it on the record. She just said that she want she wanted to know if I wanted to post and distribute agendas to Deerfield right. regulations right. in Massachusetts law to the board. And no, I think that it can stay with her because. <laughs> All right. So the only potentially we might have a new motion to add under assistant town administrator a final bullet that would say assist the building assistant with processing applications for, and, and it would say processing applications period. Yeah. So could I have a motion for that? This is Andrea. Um, I move that we accept that additional bullet point to assistant town administrator's duties. Thank you, Andrea. Kathy Sylvester, second. Thank you, Kathy. Is there any further discussion? Alrighty, thank you. Uh, Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Denise Mason. Denise Mason, yes. Andrea Leibson. Andrea Leibson, yes. And Mary Cloutier. And Mary Cloutier, yes. And Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, yes. Thank you, so that's passed. Okay. 
All righty. Um, <clears throat> moving on, just about where we were <laughs> going to be anyway. Question, Anna, yes, when, Denise. When you revise that, can you send that out? Because I just <laughs> absolutely didn't you know. Just absolutely. got too confusing. Absolutely. Uh, Thank you. Well, and then it would go in all of our binders yes. as well, which is good. All right, um, for the uh, planning board budget update, um, two bullet points under that, revolving fund and the planner. I mentioned just as an aside, uh, one of the things that I learned a little bit more about since our last meeting was, and maybe this is just an FYI to members of the planning board <laughs> to um, explain that we do have a revolving fund in the planning board. As I understand, these are, um, funds that are collected from applications, site plan review, stormwater application, et cetera. Um, in general, uh, that money can be used for either overages that potentially we might have had during the fiscal year, or um, possibly also uh, if uh, an applicant has um, signed approval for, say, something like peer review, but we haven't yet had the transaction of those funds, we could start the um, peer review process with um, footing the bill and then um, the applicant would pay us back. So we, so we would have um, some funds that are still, we, we need to have some funds necessary. Right now we have about 12,000 in our revolving fund plan, our revolving fund, there's no plans at this point to um, tap into that, but if, FYI, that's something that we have a bank account that maybe some people didn't realize that we had. Jennifer? I have a plan for it. Pardon me? Oh, well, I have uh, a... uh, we, we might be talking about that in a minute uh, under the planner. Is that okay? Yep. Thank you. Um, so the next piece, um, we, <clears throat> we did have our... Um, survey of planning board members and uh, in terms of priorities for the coming year or priorities going forward and um, strong on the list was um, hiring a planner. Um, it was interesting as um, in, in particular, I was talking with Julie Chalfa and she says, what does a planner do? And I thought, well, that's a really good question. So I, um, went about um, <laughs> uh, interviewing Towns and Jen. Help me here because I'm- Where's your documents? So is it, where do you keep them on your computer? Your PowerPoint? It's in my Google Drive. Okay, so go to- your Gmail button is the second one. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. So um, there we are for full screen. And how can I get rid of all this? I can't. They're just down here. No, we need to see each other. This? Perfect. This? Here's the people's faces. Can you just click your next button, like your arrow? Thank you. Move that far away. Okay, now we're set. But then she's, they're still up there. I don't understand that. <clears throat> huh. How come they're all up there? Do I have to touch the screen on the big screen, Jen, to get rid of that? To get rid of what? We see it perfectly. Okay. Let me see hmm. what I'm seeing. Yep. Yeah. Can you see, you can see the whole screen. Whole yep. screen, perfect. Because here in town hall, we just see it's some of it's cut off. That's right. So in any event, um, so here we go, if you if bear with me. And, and the, um, the goal with this is to inform you of, or share with all of you and others, uh, <clears throat> what I found out from talking with uh, planners in uh, eight surrounding towns and also um, potentially think of how we might be able to lobby for some additional planning assistance here in Deerfield. So that will be the discussion potentially after the presentation. <clears throat> um, 
Why? There we go. Um, so these are the uh, eight towns that we looked at. You can see that uh, the town population ranged from 1,600 to 17,000, quite a, quite a range. And the, um, the type of planning assistance um, ranged from essentially using um, organizations such as FERCOG, Franklin Regional Planning Board, Pioneer Valley Planning um, Commission, as well as having assistant town planners who are um, often bachelors trained um, people, and then also um, actually directors of planning who do have certification from uh, the AICP, American Institute of Professional uh, Certified Planners, I guess it's called. Um, no, no surprise um, here in Deerfield, um, <laughs> we're pretty big in relation to all the towns in, in Franklin County, but um, our, our volunteers and staff, overburdened staff really essentially do all the, the, the work in relation to um, official planning assistance. Uh, back to uh, Julie's question of what are the advan you know what are what does a planner do? Um, I do have a number of planning um, job descriptions that people have sent to me, but um, you know, sometimes those can be kind of dry. So it's good to note that almost all the planners mentioned the degree to which an, a professional planner can relieve burdens of both staff and the boards. And um, when they talk about facilitating economic development, it's not necessarily going out and beating the bushes and trying to find businesses to come to town. The, the primary way that that occurs is by making sure that zoning bylaws are, um, are appropriate and appropriate in relation to town vision, as mentioned in plans, as well as um, that the processes, the applications, the, the timed frames for the applications, that, it, that those are, are um, easy for potential businesses when they, when they want to come to Deerfield. Um, and certainly almost all of the towns talked about the degree to which uh, legal can be an important concern as well as expense, um, especially if there isn't professional planning within the towns. Um, most of the towns, certainly the towns that had the professional planners, um, they write and administer the grants. If in those situations where grants allow grant administration, sometimes they don't. Um, it is important to note that planners assist all, well, assist boards. It's not just the planning board. They assist the select board, the ZBA, and even Energy committee, as mentions, uh, assisting advisory committees um, with bylaws and work to promote the town visions. Um, and also, too, um, planners are very much involved with looking at the town plans. Those are really one of our best ways to know what our uh, residents want. And so, you know, unfortunately, our master plan from 2001, our complete streets and our housing, housing production from 2011, whatnot, um, are a bit challenging for us right now, but planners can make sure that those plans are, are also implemented as well as just not just <laughs> written. Irving was one of the first towns that I looked at, um, certainly small, but they have a very dynamic young planner. Um, and I'll say as an aside, it was really interesting to me how much all these planners love their jobs. They just love their jobs. <laughs> they, this was very exciting. Um, they um, definitely, you know, with moving projects forward, writing grants. Um, Irving was kind of cool because in her, what, 18 months on the job, um, she's written or received a million and a half in grants. In fact, they just did receive a $60,000 uh, one-stop grant for um, revising their bylaws, something near and dear I know to Jen's heart. <clears throat> um, they also, right now, Irving, I guess, is so excited about the grant opportunities because there are also so many grant opportunities out there that um, she's working now with their finance committee to actually create a line item for uh, matching funds. Otherwise, if there's not a line item, then um, matching funds need to go through town meeting or a special town meeting, and that can slow down the whole grant application process. So that seemed like a really nice uh, proactive idea. 
um, she was the first among many of the towns who said, oh, wow, you know, Deerfield, you guys are so busy. <laughs> you, you got a lot more going on than, than we in the smaller towns. Um, and, uh, you know, it can really be great having a planner. <laughs> um, she did mention that um, the degree to which a planner can take work off of people's plates and give people a chance to catch up, um, that's really tied in a lot to um, setting clear expectations. Uh, she said that that was obviously very important that at the beginning, especially, um, set the clear expectations as to what the planner is going to be doing, whether and, and if it has to do with, let's just take care of the work we got going on right now, then you know, we'll hold off on some of the grants. Um, obvious, but <laughs> good to, to notice. <clears throat> the Montague Town Planner also, um, very dynamic. He, he talked about, he goes wherever he's needed. Um, you know, be it uh, with the industrial corporation. We don't hear too much about our industrial corporation, or at least here on the planning board, I haven't heard too much about it. But um, the cons conscom, the fine, you know, the 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 planning board, um, wherever he's needed, he he's out there. Um, and again, he talked about how implementing the town plans was so important. He says his town plans are on his desk; they're dog-eared. He's just looking at them all the time. Um, and that he also just more than pays for himself in his grants. Usually it's 250 to 500,000 a year, sometimes up to 2 million and beyond. Um, and um, he especially, you know, and here at Deerfield, we are in a position of definitely expanding our capacity. We're expanding lots of things right now. And he, he was certainly saying, well, if you wanna be proactive and, and move forward, you really need a planner to help you do that. <clears throat> Uh, the town planner in orange is Ill eligible for his, uh, his uh, certification. Um, he also really talked about being out in the community. One of the questions I was asking all of these folks were, how do you, how do you find, get community engagement? How do you find out what the community really wants? And <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure this is quite the case, but he says, everybody knows my face. Uh, he's, he's out there. He says he's out at, to, at the at the local drugstore passing out leaflets and information um, papers um, and flyers. Uh, he comes to many, many different board meetings um, at schools, in the senior center, et cetera. Um, and they also had an interesting idea. He said um, they could really could almost not do without their senior work off program. Um, they allow or they've um, uh, put forward a situation where seniors can work up to 100 hours a year um, get a reduction of their taxes, their property taxes for 1200 So that's basically what, 12, 12 bucks an hour. And he said he couldn't imagine working without his their, their senior work off volunteers. They usually have two at any given town and that it was an incredible benefit to the town. Um, he recently got a $75,000 grant to revise their master plan. Um, and you may have noticed in the recorder last week, um, they ha it was on the front page, actually, um, they received a $6,000 Delta grant from FERCOG, that's the District Local Technical Assistance Grant, and a $24,000 state grant to update their housing production plan. Okay. Um, so um, yet again, you know, the plans are really important in helping guiding, guide the planners um, activities. I have to say, as a side too, Kathy was extremely uh, instrumental in the PowerPoint. So <laughs> we have we so can we can we can thank Kathy for these wonderful bullets. Um, <clears throat> Conway, um, they spoke specifically of how much they use um, legal and the expense uh, that is used. That they that they have going towards legal and um, although FERCOG and Franklin Regional Planning Board assist them, um, there are many other areas where um, the issues coming before the planning board are becoming so complex and so complicated um, that they really feel like they need professional help, and that that professional help potentially could um, reduce some of their legal expenses. Um, they also just received a FERCOG Delta grant to up update just one chapter of their master plan, but that's a way to get started is one chapter at a time. 
uh, <clears throat> Waitley, um, they have a community development administrator. She's someone who has a bachelor's. Uh, she reports to the town administrator and very clearly is working to um, assist the town administrator deal with all of the um, various projects that are on the town's plate and trying to move them forward. Uh, it was interesting, I talked with her about um, where does she sit? Because I know that that's an issue for all of us. And she said she, yeah, I mean, she does have a place to put her computer, but that she's remote, she's out there where she's needed. And she gave us an example. Um, if it's sewer, water, public works, you know, they're doing the physical work and she's doing the paperwork. Um, so she's, she's, she's all over, not just sitting at one place in town hall. Um, Hatfield, uh, this was interesting because um, they also are very concerned uh, with the increasing complexity of projects and um, the planning board chair in Hatfield is approaching her planning board or her finance committee um, for the third time, third year in a row um, to request uh, monies for planning assistance. And she said, hey, you know, could, could Deerfield share a planner with us? She's going to probably be looking for 13,500. I have a little bit more about that in a minute. Sunderland, um, there's a story here that I don't quite understand. Uh, mm. They don't do very much with zoning changes. Um, maybe they're just spit clean and perfect. Um, I don't know. Um, they also, uh, it, they don't appear to uh, budget anything for planning or budget much for, much for planning. If they feel that they need assistance, they'll go to FERCOG for the Delta grants. Um, and um, actually I did speak with um, <clears throat> uh, Adam Sokolowski, our, our ZBA chair, and he suggested, wow, could, uh, could we have something similar to a collaboration that we have with South County EMS, which works so well? But Sunderland, no thank you. Nope, no thank you. <laughs> Greenfield, um, our town's, our county seat, certainly not um, a different, is, uh, you know, a different scope than, than Deerfield. Um, but um, uh, one of the things that was interesting uh, from Gr Greenfield, he said, right now they only have 1.5 uh, planners in their department, but sometimes they're up to seven. And what they do is they'll get going on different projects. Those projects start to take on a life of their own, and then they get peeled off from the planning department and um, <clears throat> take care of themselves. So that was that was nice to hear um, flexibility there. <clears throat> the strongest theme certainly that came through um, a lot of feelings at Deerfield. Uh, you know, there's. <laughs> We have a reputation out there. We're 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 busy. We're a busy town. We all know that, right? Jen says, "Yeah, yeah, we're a busy town." Um, and you got so much going on, you really need a planner. Um, definitely a theme that legal costs either can skyrocket because of um, <clears throat> problems uh, if you don't have a professional planning assistance, or um, conversely, that legal costs can decrease with planning assistance. Um, all of the places, all of the towns were mentioning how much money there is out there. But again, back to capacity conversations, you can't just write a grant and then ugh, what do we do with it? Um, and so that's where the planners can help with um, <clears throat> providing assistance to the staff um, uh, to, to make sure that grants that are written um, actually are implemented and move forward. Question, questions for Deerfield, um, as um, Jen, Jen, well, we've had some conversations last, if any of you were on the um, finance committee meeting last week, Jen and uh, Casey and Carolyn uh, at that meeting, and then I know at other select board meetings, Trevor and Dave have also been very supportive of um, getting some planning assistance for Deerfield. Of course, it all comes down to money. And um, as Denise can attest at a select board meeting immediately prior to our meeting tonight, um, as there was much discussion about uh, grants that are being sought and um, you know how are we going to uh, have the capacity to, uh, to help all this, these wonderful visions go forward. 
Um, certainly one planner can't do that, but a planner could certainly help. For contracted services, the proposal that's out there right now in contracted services is for $10,000 for a planner. Um, that ends up being about 10 hours a month or a couple hours a week. <laughs> um, interestingly, I mean, when you really look at it, it's not really 10,000 a month because right now um, we have some additional consultation money in our planning budget. Um, so the, our planning budget would be reduced by 5K. Um, and so um, our net expense to the town would be about 5K, um, which is, Everything's relative. I mean, right now, again, the meeting that Denise was just part of, um, the, the, our, our town budget is going to be very challenging this year. Um, they have requested level funding. And um, so that's the need for us to have maybe some <laughs> discussion on how can we lobby for some more professional assistance. If we did get um, or, or part of the hope with the contracted services is that maybe um, they could help with one or two zoning bylaw proposals a year, um, attend some meetings of some of the boards and whatnot, um, potentially start review of our um, zoning bylaws, um, and um, definitely really determine what needs might be for an official FY24 full-blown planner proposal. Um, Hatfield, um, they're looking for, well, the, it, whether or not we could split a half-time position with them. Now, this is, of course, assuming that we could even find someone. Uh, right now, FERCOG has two planning positions that are available and um, full-time planners, and they're apprehensive that they'll be able to do anything with filling those so um, but you never know you don't and you don't know till you you try um, so if 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 Hatfield were to be, get approved for 13,000 in their budget um, and that 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 would be one quarter of a, of a planner so we could um, add our additional 8k plus the five that was in our budget otherwise and and get um, basically 10 hours a week instead of 10 hours a month um, certainly in that situation, the duties could be, um, as stated above, although, um, more possible as well as writing and administering some grants, helping to work on streamlining our application processes and also implementing miscellaneous projects. Um, Jen had mentioned a question of whether or not um, our contracted services, Jen can fill in a little bit, but they've had some conversations with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, and uh, uh, apparently there is um, someone that could be available for us um, starting at the beginning of the next fiscal year. And then a question is whether or not there might be some assistance this year, which could tie into those revolving funds. Um, so there we are with what's going on, at least in... Uh, <laughs> In some conversations with eight towns in our surrounding areas, um, certainly it's a step in the right direction. The question is, um, you know, how can we help something happen this year? <laughs> so I'll be quiet now and maybe um, people can raise their hands and have comments or um, suggestions or ideas on how can we get a planner <laughs> for Deerfield? Yes, Denise. Oh, you know my first observation, I don't know what every, you know, I don't know a whole lot about all the other towns, but I know that it's probably not a level playing field. You know, I don't know if other towns need to have a whole new sewer. I don't know what other towns are going for. So I, so I think, you know, we can't, we certainly can't compare Deerfield to other towns. I know that Montague has a planner and they also have a grant writer. So, and I guess that was my question. So are you talking about having a planner slash grant writer position? Um, or uh, you know, that could be determined. I think right now in the um, contracted services, there is a request for a grant writer and the planner. And I think, you know, as if both of those positions come to fruition, there would be figuring that out. Um, you know, I think if the grant writer is able to zip quick with writing glance, there certainly is enough other things going on with um, the planning board to help with implementing projects. So, 
because I, I'm not I'm, I'm not sure whether they're necessarily the same skill set. Oh we well, you know, I yes, we had that conversation yeah. with um, with Furcog, and uh, at one point they said no, it's not the same skill set. But then as I'm calling around to all these other towns, definitely the planners are seeming to write the grant. So maybe it's just the way it's set up in the individual towns. I, I'm not certain, but I, I do believe that, I mean, in my own experience, and I did years too, that grant writers are pretty special and yeah. planners who are working with zoning bylaws have their own skill set. So, right. yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Denise, when, when, you, when you speak, I can hear you. It's just not very oh, sorry. loudly. Um, and Rachel has her hand raised. Yeah, Rachel, no, I'm, I'm waiting. Uh, and and I, I thank you. I want to just say this is a fantastic presentation, just by the way, and great research. Um, and I would say also just to the grant writer issue, it, people can write grant writers who aren't grants, who aren't grant writers, what you do end up is with a less, less skilled grant writer, potentially. So I, I put that out there too, that that's, um, that's just that can be the same person, just different skills within the same person. Um, when did Montague? How old is Montague's a town plan? We oh, talked about town this. Plan also there. Um, hmm. uh, you go. You continue and ask your other questions, and I'll be able to answer that. Okay, okay. because uh, well, I guess my point is too that that would be part of and and Denise, I I, I I'm curious with the the your new um, the that you chair that this doesn't seem really like right in that wheelhouse, like co coordinating uh, the, the efforts of different commi committees and um, uh, departments. Um, so I, I, I kind of think that that would be something to look at. This would be a great presentation for that committee as well just because of the overlap, obviously with finance, obviously with select board, but also with the, 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 gr the group that you chair. Um, and then just my last piece on this one is that when you say that some, like a town like Conway, they, and since we did have a, a Pat Smith who was not a planner, but, but tremendous support. And, uh, you know, we talked about this with the Buckland presentation for their um, ADUs, that they had tremendous support from the FERCOG, um, which was a contracted service up in Buckland, not a planner, but actually contracted services. That, is, that what, is that what Conway has as well? They contract per with each project, for example? Um, yes. With the FERCOG or with a... Do they also work with a Pioneer Valley consortium? Yes, yes. And um, Montague's um, master plan is 1999. So they're two years older than we are. Wow. So, yeah. Okay, interesting. Is it on share your screen now? Uh, or do you want to keep it up? Oh, here. Yes, I can stop share. That makes more sense. And um, Jennifer? Um, so... Talking to the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and seeing what they had to offer um, seems having the money in the contracted services to pay for this seems very reasonable at the moment before versus hiring a position in the town and paying um, all of the health insurance and everything that's above and beyond um, like a, a full time employee sharing it I, I feel is is challenging because that person needs to know both towns bylaws and situations and and have them very clear vision on the two separate towns i mean that's just my opinion that it would be you want somebody to really immerse themselves in what deerfield uh has planned and to be very clear and focused and be able to make those meetings that's so, what a consultant does too though Sorry, a consultant does that too. A consultant yeah. has one consultancy and one consultancy, and they learn. Yeah, but to pay for one, like, like you're you're paying one person to do two versus just picking and choosing, and I don't know. I mean, well, I'll also say that Hatfield is very rudimentary right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's you know they're in interested in that. Might be work. Work. I don't. I don't know. I really. Um, uh, talking to 
uh, Catherine Rate, who is the director at PVPC, and you know they have a senior planner that would um, help in a lot of the areas. And we, I mean, it, it's also like we do it for a year. If it doesn't work out, then we don't have to contract again, mm -hmm. um, or we can go a different avenue. It um, so something happened today, and I didn't even have a chance to tell anybody. So we had somebody just stop into town hall, and Bob Walden wasn't there, and wanted. Um, and this is a perfect example to show, you know, to to tell the planning board tonight. So they want to open a business in town, and they gave me the address. So I said, hold on a second, let me check to see what zone it's in and see if it's okay. So then I go to the use chart in our zoning bylaw. We don't have, um, it was Chinese body work, basically. It's not massage, it's not acupuncture, um, but we don't even have anything in that type of category. <laughs> you know, so I was thinking, you know, is it like a spa? Is it like a salon? Is it, um, you know, yeah, now we don't have that. And so then, you know, I called Bob because he wasn't in the office and I'm like, where would you put this? And I just think that this is a really good example of if we had a bylaw review of somebody that could really find comb it and, and add a whole lot of things to this bylaw to make it so that we have a place to put businesses like this and add a category and we're not, because basically we have to find a different category that closely fits it. So like the only thing I could find that was sort of like medical, like that would be, you know, close to it. And, but then because I've, I've done this before, if the change of use has been within two years, you can keep that use. And so guess what the business was? It was acupuncture. So the, the place that this business wants to go into was an actu acupuncture place up until February of 2022. So you can go in there because it's a similar use and all you need to do is make sure that it meets your state requirements for your use and, and building code, you know, so Bob would check that out and get a sign permit and, and he wouldn't need a special permit or wouldn't need any other, but so that just worked out for this business. However, that's something that I, I found to be challenging with our bylaw and which brings me circles back around that if we have this money in the revolving fund and they have the availability in this fiscal year, whether we start with some of those funds to try to have a review of our bylaw in this fiscal year before, if, you know, we, we'll see if we'll get the money or not to have to hire PVPC for um, contracted services to work on the other planning details in next fiscal year, it may be worthwhile. Yes, I think, I mean, I think that if we do have um, opportunity to have some planning, then certainly we need to, it want to be a fun challenge to figure out what the priorities are. I mean, as we saw though, you know, uh, which was the town that had 60,000 to redo their, review their whole bylaws. So um, clearly looking at our bylaws is going to be quite, I mean, that would more than take up the whole it does. budget. Right. <laughs> But, you know, could be, that could be the priority that we all town legal us decide on. Other thoughts and especially thoughts in relation, well, I mean, if we have to know what we would be lobbying for, but I mean, at this point, what we would be lobbying for is uh, we, there's a proposal for 10K, which is really just 5K in the fiscal year budget and actually at the fin finance committee meeting they put off making a vote on it they wanted to see all the rest of the proposals and then they're just going to start chopping stuff away so you know i mean at least we've got something in there but yes andrea uh, so this is andrea my concern is bringing more money into town to help fund all kinds of things that we want to accomplish. 
That, in my humble opinion, requires grant writing. I know that my work on the Open Space Committee has shown me two grants already, one we missed completely, one of which we could apply for only if we complete the whole uh, survey and, um, and the plan that would come from that. So, and where was it that, that she, they brought in $1.2 million, $1.5 million? I mean, we've got to find money outside of town. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that focusing on someone who can write and implement and help plan monies that we can get from other places is a very high priority. Well, I think you've mentioned two things. One is writing and one is implementing. And, 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 and administration. That's why right. I don't think it can be. Right. That's why I think it's con concerning that we hire a grant writer that's great well but they won't they won't be there for the administration mm -hmm. and I, I believe Jen do you know is it 10k that is being asked for also for a grant writer there is a additional grant writer in the contracted services request also right so what they did is they clumped a grant writer with the MVP so they put it together so I think it's 25,000 that's in the grant writer and 10,000 that's in for the contracted services for a planner. Oh, now okay. there's a separate amount that's the planning board money that they've reduced, but mm -hmm. that also covers your mailings and your workshops and you know all of the things that that are the planning board. So that's that's separate. Right. So if I if I'm summarizing correctly, right now in the planning board budget, there's two grand for those mailings and workshops and whatnot. There, there is a ten thousand dollar request for planning contracted services, and then you're saying twenty five thousand for a grant writer. So they're separate. You have your planning board budget, correct? correct. Right? And then you correct. have your contracted services. Right. Yeah, correct. I mean, and contracted services. They're looking. There's a request for ten k for planning assistance or a plan. right. Yeah, right. Planning contract right. services. So then, so the twenty five thousand is also for um, there's like a grant writer that that, that they were hiring. Um, Denise, do you remember who the yeah, woman we, that um, we've hired a grant writer um, to do the community one stop, and that is to get, I mean, yeah, to access money for the um, hopefully new municipal building. Right, and it's also to continue some of the MVP with. Um, Chris Curtis. So I wanted to be careful that it was not all like, okay, now you have $25,000 that are just going to MVP, you know, and that's not the case. So can I ask, can monies be pooled from the different areas to um, have someone who is a grant writer do things for complete, for, all, for ver various projects, not just, you know, a grant writer for this and a grant writer for a different, yeah. so, someone I mean, who understood the town and understood maybe the town plan, then it would make more sense to have one person writing grants in a variety of areas. And then you also gain expertise because you don't have to keep learning what's going on in town. It's a, yeah, economy of scale. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wait, maybe we can keep the grant writing. Um, it, yeah, my, in my, my contention is that it needs to be part of it because we need more money. But it, not part of our, Mm -hmm. yeah. nope. No, that's what I was trying to say. It's in contracted services, which is a, a separate, but you're, you're right. We do need that, but above and beyond, which is the purview of the planning board and having the planner is it, unless we change our bylaws to encourage economic development and um, mold the town with our bylaw, that's, to bring to bring money and then to have grants to write to make those things happen it's like we're we're working like in a backwards way because we have to change our bylaw to have mixed use buildings and have it and really look at our map and really look at where we want to have growth and where we we don't and what needs to happen and it really starts with the bylaw it's it's hard to then as administrative part of it is to then rush to make a decision. 
okay, now we got to go to the select board. We'll go quick to the planning board. Then we got to bring it to town meeting and we got to vote. And that's and then people feel like they're getting the wool put over their eyes and like things are being rushed um, through a process. Whereas if we had it reviewed and had a clearer path, I think it would be beneficial for everybody. Oh, yeah, I think it's hard to know which is the chicken and which is the egg. Exactly. Do we try to lobby for consulting assistance at our contracted services as is proposed right now? <clears throat> and then we determine what the priorities would be or do we lobby for those contracted services with a specific goal in mind? I mean, I, I think we all are in agreement from our own reading of the <clears throat> of our zoning bylaws that they're uh, there's a lot of areas that can be updated. Um, uh, I certainly fear that, you know, for seven, for 10, for 10 K or even a little bit this year, that's going to be a drop in the bucket for what is needed for looking at our zoning bylaws. And in the meantime, then we would have nothing for the planning board for the rest of the year. So <clears throat> Jen. Well, what about using some of the revolving fund to start looking at areas of the bylaw in this fiscal year? And then if we do get the 10,000, that would help with, you know, other duties and that's, you know, processes. Uh, and it, uh, I think that's a good idea. Again, um, you know, which was the town that just got a grant of 60 grand to redo their bylaws. So you know, for us to have 5K to, uh, to look at this year, I'm not sure. Denise? I think they did that through the Community One Stop funding, and they did that. This is the second year in Community One Stop, so I think they, that's where they got the money from. And you can only apply for one project per year. We already do, but, but that's great. Well, I that's mean, 60K. That's, yeah, I know. That's huge. Yeah. But that's, well, I mean, so how do we, how, I mean, if in fact, right now, the finance committee is meeting <laughs> and they're going through all of the budget requests and then they're going to start um, saying yay and nay. Um, and then they, I mean, they still can say yay and nay and it still can come before town meeting. Um, so I'm just wondering about um, certainly having planning assistance, however, wherever it's um, put, is um, strongly supported by the planning board and the select board and the, you know, uh, many other folks, but, you know, it's, it's all gonna come down to the priority lists and how can, can, does anyone have any ideas on how we might be able to, to lobby? I mean, I don't think we can make this, you know, this is too long of a presentation for the, finance committee or for town meeting or for the select board, we could tell them to come to an end to this YouTube, but um, I mean, we want to get something, right? We want to get something. Right. And so, yes, Denise. So, so Jen, okay, what, what, what services can Pioneer Valley Planning Commission give us and to what, I mean, what's the cost? So I have um, a little brochure that they um, sent to me and it says, so examples of planning board assistance, review and comment of adequacy of existing zoning ordinances and bylaws of subdivision regulations, review zoning ordinances and bylaws for consistency with state law, creating, developing, review, intake and tracking systems, assist in redrafting and updating zoning ordinance and bylaws or subdivision regulations updates on planning board requirements and responsibilities, assistance in implementing smart growth tools and strategies, access to key content via telephone, email, scheduled meetings or guidance and advice, attendance at planning board meetings, assistance in reviewing meeting agendas and meeting minutes, training for planning board, board of appeals, guidance concerning planning principles and planning law, interpretation of local ordinances, bylaws and regulations, general municipal planning functions. So, so those are some of them. Right, I mean, it's a wonderful menu and wouldn't we love to pick from that? But for two hours a week. Oh, for two hours a week? Uh, for well, 10 grand, that's what, that's what it, two and a half hours a week. 10 grand comes down to, to 
at, at their hourly rate comes down to 10 hours a month. If we were hiring them now, well, oh, that's right. You said you're not sure whether they would be available now. No, they said to me that he is the, the senior planner is available this fiscal year. We would contract them for next fiscal year. I was considering asking the planning board if they would consider using some of the revolving fund of the $12,000 to jumpstart on our zoning bylaw, to start looking at our use chart, to start looking at things this fiscal year mm -hmm. and using some of those funds before, I mean, we haven't, we have to wait for town meeting. We have to decide if, if that gets off the chopping block, then it's off the table completely. So, but using some of that revolving fund well, Jen, would it be possible for you to have a conversation with them? I mean, this is kind of like there's two different things that we're talking about. If we're talking about the revolving fund, um, recognizing that reviewing our bylaws is a huge challenge, what could they suggest that they could do for us for 20 hours? You know, what what could they do? And could they could you have them report back to us what they think they could do in relation to our bylaws? Sure. I mean, I reached out to her last week and sent an email just seeing if what they were, what their availability was this year, because that's what she said in our first phone call. So I was like, what is your availability? Um, and what, what could you do in this fiscal year? She uh, hasn't responded. So I called today knowing we were having this meeting tonight and just left another message saying, hi, it's me again. <laughs> so um, I haven't heard, I haven't heard back from her. So, you know, I would, I would invite them either the senior planner or or the director to come to one of our meetings and if that's the case then you guys can ask questions and see sort of what their purview is and what um what it is that they think that they could provide for us okay um you know so well if you could continue i think if you could continue pers pursuing what how might they approach this really big job <laughs> right. um, for us? And then, so that's sort of on, on this part of the table. And on this, the other side, part of the table is, again, we've got 10K that we're re requesting, but right now it's really only 5K net. <clears throat> well, the other thing is, right. it just occurred to me was maybe we use some of that money to be for, for hiring their planner to find us a grant to redo our zoning bylaw. So if we spend the money with them writing and implementing a grant sure. to, you know, yeah. that's much larger. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that, again, I, I think that actually that's a great idea and we could check with them about that. Um, that would be a great idea. But in the meantime, what do we do about trying to lobby with the finance committee for the money that we're proposing right now, because the state of the Deerfield budget is such that we're gonna have to really get either a lot of people, a lot of voices and a, well, and probably a really strong case or it's gonna be off the table real quick. Well, contracted services has already been voted and um, approved. Yeah, they voted it. Well, last year or last week, uh, Julie said she wanted to put that to the side until she saw all the rest of the, um, maybe it was just the planning part, I don't know, the contracted services part, but she said she put it aside until she heard all, they heard all the rest of the proposals. Okay, uh, I left my book at work, so I don't have it. So this is why, and this is where, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, my question is, I guess, is that this is where our priorities and this list of priorities, which just for me feels like everything, um, is so functionally important uh, because we've just made some zoning uh, decisions um, about relative to um, entertainment and you know changing uses for that part of town. And we really need to go back at that. Uh, that was, uh, uh, even in the formation of it, we said we need to come back to this because this bylaw is now needs cleaning up. We created one that is really raggedy and you know, we, we, it looks highly like spot zoning and we made a good case for it not to be because we would come back to it. So there's just one right there that we made a promise to do in terms of zoning review. 
we, we made this promise already as we were plan, uh, approving the la that, that change, that bylaw change. A and then the ADU, which we put forward, you know, a proposal and we didn't bring it all the way in because we didn't feel like we had enough understanding of what we were presenting and we didn't have enough community buy-in. That's another thing that's been, and that we've talked about here. So we've got these, we've got, let's say three strong proposals in terms of what, um, what we what what we want to accomplish? I think that that's the the case that we make relative to, for instance, bylaw changes, uh, you know, bylaw cleanup, bylaw review, if you will. Um, so, it, right there, that's that's ten hours a month, and that's not even writing our decisions, which is what another thing I was, <laughs> I'm going to go back to that. But you know, support with writing decisions. It, it, this was, this is something that we've been working on. Well, <clears throat> some, sometimes when proposals are brought forward to different bodies, um, we people try to get you know letters of support from influential yeah. people. Should we try <clears throat> to get that and send it to the finance committee? Um, what are other ideas to try to encourage the finance committee to support our at least the 10 grand or 5k really contracted services? Denise? Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I'm, I'm not really clear on that. No, I, I thought Jen just said that we have $10,000. No, no, we don't. It's in, it's $10,000 is proposed, proposing. Okay. but they haven't, I mean. Um, we have a revolving fund is what I'm saying is available. Bob, right, but, okay. right, and that's twelve k, right. but we can see all okay. of it. Well, so, okay, so I think Rachel made a really good point. We do have three bylaws that I think need to be taken. You know, we should take a look at them, and I be, I think we should use Pioneer, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to do that. And I, you know, I, you know, you're talking about the chicken and the egg. I think that we have issues already because of the bylaws, and I think we have because the fifty foot frontage that issue. That's the a lot of pushback one. because of that. It's hard to hard to move forward, and that may take a while. So I'm in favor of really working on the bylaws. Um, as far as grant writers are concerned, um, you know, currently we do have a grant writer who's doing one. We also found we are doing um, a project that's going to be crosswalks in front of Frontier and then mm -hmm. in front of the proposed the park. Mm -hmm. And um, we got the FERCOG to work, and then I keep forgetting the consulting firm, but it's to no cost to us, which is really great because they were working under a foundation. So, you know, I think little by little, and then we're also, I was working, the meeting before this when I was working with the select board to come up with, we already have a whole list of everything that we're working on through CCI. And so we just had a meeting to prioritize our ask um, for support for Joe Comerford and Natalie, and hopefully um, Jim McGovern at some point. So we're asking, there's a lot of money that's coming into the state and you know we, we basically want a piece of that. So and how do we, how would we maybe, get such well, money? But wait a second, that's a little bit of agenda. <laughs> it, 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 it is, but it all ties mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, Andrew's talking about grant writer. I know we need a grant writer. We need a planner. We need all of this, but we also need our bylaws. So, and uh, a little bit of a parallel track here, just a moment, Jen, is, um, I mean, we've got the question of how to uh, convince the finance committee at this point to support 5K extra for contracted services for a planner. Um, so a parallel track, which is also on our agenda with our planning board priorities, we had talked about a question as, as has been mentioned here with um, looking at our different housing initiatives. And in particular, certainly one of the first ones as Rachel was just saying, the accessory apartment proposal, um, we do still have money budgeted through Chris Curtis for the accessory apartment bylaw, which is probably 80, 85, 90% there. Part of what Chris was, Chris and I had a 
conversation, we were thinking about whether or not we could get a working, a working group, a couple planning board members, maybe someone from the ZBA, the finance committee, the select board to basically advise the planning board and on what are some of the issues with our proposed accessory apartment bylaw right now, and then bring those um, comments back to the planning board for us then to um, rework our accessory bylaw and whether or not we could bring it to the April town meeting. I'm not sure if that would be too soon or not, but in any event, um, what I'm thinking about with the accessory apartment bylaw is that we're pretty far along with that right now. And one of the things we keep talking about, or I certainly keep talking about is public engagement and how do we really know what the community wants? And um, if we're able to bring some, bring the accessory apartments forward and it comes to a town meeting, be it in the spring or the fall, and we'll see what the community wants before we go forward with upzoning town center or looking at multifamilies or I don't know, whatever else we'd be looking at. So that's kind of the parallel track. And I hesitate to say that because it's, um, <laughs> we're, we're putting two, two things out there. I mean, maybe what we're talking about is we move forward with the contracted services is, um, I don't know, trying to, well, I don't know, I'm trying to get people to write letters. I don't know. You know, I mean, it's writing letters in a vacuum. Many, many different town budgets have a lot of needs and it appears that our town budget this year is really, really tight. So, so, well, we we in in the meeting that I was just at, which is you know public select board meeting, um, and I'm not sure that's good. I think Casey was going to check on that tomorrow, but supposedly, I think 67 more students from Frontier are um, signed up to go to the tech school, mm -hmm. which we found. I mean, mm -hmm. found like oh my god, that's a huge amount of students in one year. But maybe because you know people are looking for trades instead of just going to college, which is probably a good idea for a while. But that also adds uh, to the tune of more than $200,000 to that budget. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're getting hit from all directions, unfortunately. That was- Jen, do you have any suggestions for how we can lobby to get some money to move forward with planning assistance? What is your sort of just off the cuff suggestion? Well, I was thinking, because I wrote in my book that they passed it 5-0-2, like five people, you know, I was looking at our contracted service for the finance committee. Okay. And so, so th that's what, that's what I thought. And so I asked um, Casey, I said, did they approve it? And they approved the recommendation for town meeting for for that contracted services budget. However, that doesn't mean they're not gonna go back and cut every, you know, show once they have everything and they are looking at the whole picture, they will go back and then start, you know, cutting. So again, do you have any, do you have any suggestions um, from your inside info <laughs> um, of how we might be able to Speak, I mean, because especially at, at the finance committee meetings, I mean, they're fairly quick. It's not like, you know, if I were to speak, it'd be two minutes. And yeah, I mean, I, I really liked your presentation that you gave. It is too long. If we could, you know, can, you know, make it much shorter or do a one sheet that we could, you know, summarize a lot of ideas. And, you know, this would be something that if it, if it makes it to the town meeting floor and we don't get slashed, then it's just doing a flyer for the community to show how important it is for all different areas. You know, I think that's where we would want to promote to support it in a, you know, in a way that the community would see how many different areas that having a planner would hit. It wouldn't just be 
a single vision. It's all right. All so if I paraphrase that we could potentially have a one pager that is sort of snazzy that could go to the the finance committee, select board, all the people, all the decision makers. Um, and uh, the finance committee will or won't ultimately recommend it for town meeting, but then we might pass out that flyer also at town meeting so that if if we've kind of done our job, maybe the residents would vote for it. Uh, yeah, I really think that the people would, if it makes it that far that we're gonna have that money, I think that the people would see that this is a necessity. I mean, we've even seen Julie you know, was Julie was very for it when, when you know, the board was sp speaking about it at um, about contracted services and, and, and the, the need for it. And I think if it, if it isn't one of those, you know, it, there's, there's so many areas that we're looking at. We're so overburdened financially that you know, we have to just see, because like you were talking, I mean, like we have to, our wastewater treatment plant and, you know, like all, there's some of these major things that the town is addressing. And this we is have level funding though, isn't it? The $10,000 for contracted services. It is isn't. Zero, we just haven't used it. No, no, it's, we're up 18.24% in contracted services. As a town. As a town. And yeah. in, in that one huh that's not in the planning board right no i appreciate that but i'm just saying well anyway well, part of that is grant writer part of that is i mean it says 10k for planning even though it nets against our planning budget in a different part of the budget right so, it's like you know I thought. it's I don't well know. this is um i think this is a good direction certainly for the finance committee meetings um, is there anybody who would like to work on this <laughs> flyer with me? Ah, Rachel. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Rachel. You can work on the flyer. And then there's a question. There is um, the question of having a, a working group that might just be one or two meetings, or maybe not too many more than that, on the accessory apartments. Also, um, I made the offer to Denise, Denise and uh, Jen and uh, Andrea. Um, we're going to be working on our fee schedule, which I know is low on <laughs> Jennifer's list of priorities, but we're trying to scratch away at some of these things. So um, Ke uh, Denise is more than up to her eyebrows with CCI right now. So I'm wondering if someone might um, take on working with Andrea. Um, this is with ADU. Revise this the fee schedule. Oh, so the fee schedule. Oh, uh, Jen, aren't weren't we pretty close at that? Yeah, I thought we were very close at that last meeting. I'm not sure that we need another. Oh, we cool. just need someone to. Um, we need a couple other towns information, I think, and then we would be good. So oh, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll send you an email tomorrow. To figure okay, out a time. Okay, so then Andrea can spearhead that with Jen, and maybe Sue Brulette can do some of the right, some research, and then we can just see you know where we could go up where it doesn't feel like it's burdening people, but yet, you know, we can increase just because of our time and staff. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it isn't a burden if it's paying for the services. Right. <laughs> for services. So. Um, I am on vacation uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this week. So you'll get my out of office. <laughs> And then if we if we could have a working group to um, maybe a couple of people on the planning board and we'll see if we can um, rope in someone from ZBA and finance committee and the select board to serve as an advisory group to um, help help us get to yes with um, our accessory apartment bylaws. Um, is there um, any volunteers who could go on that? Kathy, great. Thank you. I know Kathy's here, but I can look at you there. <laughs> I think you can see. Me. I know. It's all right. It feels like there are two Kathy's from here. That's right. Um, someone else with with uh, Kathy Sylvester. Interesting. All right. Um, well, that's Kathy. Tag me in. I, I'm I'm really kind of feeling very strongly about this finance committee piece, but I would like to. I have looked at ADUs for a long time. I mean, just starting with what we have. 
right? And then moving on to the, the you know, looking at that as part of our housing production, because we do have a housing production plan. Right. So I think that's how to loop in these other groups. That's that that plan was not made by the planning board. That was made by a, a working group. So, mm -hmm. well, I'll need some help. And I was on that. So you want to do it with me? Yeah. Thank you. Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah. Um, Jennifer. I wouldn't mind. I helped a lot in Amherst with their supplemental apartments. Yeah, I think that would be really helpful. And looking at what kinds of things we can do in terms of. Mm, right. it, it's it's all of, yeah, I think that it's like the size of the unit. There's a lot of little minutia things that I was had experience with, so I wouldn't mind being part of it. Just That's great. Un, unintended consequences, huh? Ah, goodness, I had talked about having public comments on all of this um, while we were making or before making decisions. Do we have any public comments on um, public comments on the, the meeting this evening? <laughs> As we have one there, public there is now. Nobody, we had a pat. Oh, here's Aaron. Somebody just. Well, Aaron, if you'd like to um, join in at another point, um, raise your hand. Um, I did not see any other business anticipated beforehand. Um, reports, I had Andrea gave a nice report at CCI meeting on um, the open space uh, uh, survey and results. And I asked her to um, speak tonight specifically, if in fact, I'm not sure that the open space committee has even gone this far, but I would be interested in, and I think we would be interested in what our planning board initiatives that could help support conclusions from the open space um, yes, survey. We, and I can say that we are not there mm -hmm. yet, but very preliminary results. Um, when people were asked how they'd like, for example, Community Preservation Act uh, money spent, 50% um, said um, they want it sp spent on open space protection. So a lot of not building. Um, and um, the second highest was outdoor recreation. That was considered uh, very highly. And um, what the open space uh, committee uh, uh, asked in, that, in the survey is um, what projects would uh, residents like to see prioritized over the next seven years? The highest was protecting forest land. So those areas, I mean, and protecting farmland. forest land, farmland, and preserving open space, I mean, those definitely tie into zoning bylaws. So yeah. Yeah. if you're able to, um, I don't know, have the open space committee hmm, zone in a little bit more specifically on areas that they think. Well, so, uh, so um, we met um, either, yeah, this week or uh, last week, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's a blur. And um, the report that got uh, sent out, um, a summary of the survey, it was 100 pages long. <laughs> so I, there's, I can't really um, send a lot out to you yet because it's really, really preliminary. We just spent the entire meeting discussing the, um, the results that, that, we, that we had seen. But the most, um, the most uh, the initial themes that we found coming out were again, emphasis on protection of farmland forests and the um, aquifer, emphasis on walkability and hikeability. So that's very important in terms of the park, sidewalks in general. Um, there's a lot of concern with water and it was came in all different kinds of ways, drinking water quality and quantity, access to the rivers, and then concerns about flooding. So water and all its... Uh, uh, it's, it's whether it's there or not really ugly um and then there was a real concern about communications about the available resources that the town already has so when people were asked did you use this facility did you go there a lot of people said i didn't know about that so it's about communications uh, for what the town actually does already have and then of course everyone wants to maintain the town's rural character well, Andrea, if you can, um, we're, we're excited. Yeah, planning we're ex board. I mean, um, what specifics 
might right. we be able to do to help you? And I'm saying right now, I don't think yeah. we, we, we have anything yet, except yeah. I, okay. to let you know that. So the other, the other thing of, of interest is that the three um, most cited um, activities that people do are hiking, walking, and gardening. So I think we should really think a lot about how people can move around town, hiking, walking, and then perhaps with some of our planning of uh, areas, you know, I don't know, I was even thinking the Leary lot. People want gardens. Mm -hmm. And so maybe we should think about how we can add those things into the plans that we have. So the park doesn't have anything specific. The Leary lot, I mean, I just, can just imagine raised beds in one area of the, um, of the Leary lot that people could, um, you know, claim and garden in, or could be some, anyway, th that, those are things. Well, or even more specifically, as you're talking about walkability, I mean, that has to do with complete streets and sidewalks, and also frontage. We There have been some questions about um, frontage, reducing frontage in the center village district that could potentially accomplish a lot of things. Um, so, hmm. yeah, so again, very, very, very preliminary. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah, well, um, keep, no, keep them great. working on it and <laughs> give us some marching orders. Um, any other committee reports? Ah, I missed <laughs> I, 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 can, I know, I can report on CCI, it's, it's, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. But um, we did, oh, Joe Comerford and Natalie Blay were here last, I think it was last, what's today? Yeah. Okay, must have been last week. And um, they, they had asked to come and meet after we did the CCI presentation. And so they, um, I guess the, what they were really looking for is a list of what we're doing, how they can support us, what funding we have, what funding we're going for. And, you know, in the mix, we talked about the shared streets and spaces and how we were submitting that grant. They said, oh my God, that's great to know because they can advocate for us and they'll advocate for, um, for the community one stop. So we did, we were putting that together. I put the list together. I worked on it with Casey and then we just had that meeting with the select board. So, you know, a lot of what you're talking about um, we did talk about the Leary lot. We talked, I, that is in the conversation, making it beautiful, not just functional, but beautiful, which is really important. Um, you know, just talked about where we are in the process. So there, you know, there's a lot going on. There is a lot of money coming into the state. And I just said, you know, we, we want some of that money. I mean, I don't have all, all the extra notes that we wrote. But I think it's something like nine point one billion dollars coming in, or actually, it was a, it was a total of seventeen billion. There's nine billion left, and we haven't seen any of that here. So that is going to be a big topic of conversation to get some of that money, and hopefully ask for money, more money for the town common. Um, let's see. I think yeah. Ask asking for more money for the plans for the former grammar school and the slash community senior center and more money for the sewer, which is the big one because the sewer, I'll tell you, the sewer is eating up all the money that we have right now. Right. So I don't, I don't wanna look back over the, over the so many years and to say why we are where we are now. And that's exactly why we're doing this now. So we don't, so we don't continue to be in the hole that we're in now, because that's why we're in, because we, a lot of things haven't been done, so. All right, thank you, Denise. Any other um, reports from any committees? Okay. Um, I did receive an email today, and with BCCs, it's hard to tell if everyone received it, the Attorney General's decisions on our articles. No. Oh, okay, so I'll forward that to you tomorrow, but, um, Article 10 from this, the, these have to do with our, um, uh, our October uh, town meeting. Article 10, which was the tur tourism overlay district um, was approved. Um, there was also a special note that there was a request that the attorney general review whether or not um, it was 
constituted spot zoning and they, the attorney general and their staff and her staff found that there was no grounds to um, deny it based on spot zoning. Um, unfortunately, Article 11, which was the tourism overday, overlay district map, um, was not yet approved um, because the postings were in um, were not adequate or were not were defective. So um, <laughs> newspaper ads need to be run within 21 days, and um, but and then the attorney general will attorney general's office will issue the approval. They did say that apart from the defect in the postings, they feel satisfied that the requirements of this article um, were met in the statute. And it, this again was the tourism overlay map. Excuse me. <coughs> <I'm in> the... <coughs> oh, oh, goodness, I apologize. Next time I bring water. <coughs> The last thing was um, Article 8 from um, March 5th, well, from, I believe it was from March 15th. Um, this was about our municipal, no, it was from the October meeting, our municipal frontage. And again, there was an issue with postings. <coughs> but um, yeah. thank you, Denise. <clears throat> um, they, apparently the posting issues have been corrected and the Attorney General will be issuing a um, final report by March 15th mm -hmm. on that. So <clears throat> those in general is <clears throat> good news in relation to the articles that we brought forward to town meeting. Any questions? <clears throat> okay. um, our mail, <clears throat> uh, which <laughs> now I feel like those towns that I talked to really feel vibrant. Montague is having um, a public hearing, thank you, on March 9th about a special um, permit for a Montague retreat center. So that Wednesday, uh, Wednesday March 9th, Waitley had two public meetings. They did uh, make a decision and granted a special permit for Green Jeans Farm uh, to cultivate marijuana in greenhouses. And um, they also had a public hearing on February 22nd um, <clears throat> for some citizens uh, to reduce the size of solar setbacks. And um, I don't know the results of that public hearing. In Greenfield, <clears throat> there were three um, public hearings, one with their ZBA to um, issue a special permit for adult use marijuana retail establishment. <clears throat> Another um, public hearing on March 10th, that was a special permit to allow sale of a used motor vehicles <clears throat> business on the high street property. <clears throat> and then the spe special permit was granted by the Greenfield Planning Board to convert an existing carriage house into a detached ADU. So <clears throat> issues that we deal with that are certainly hot in our other towns. Um, our next meeting, uh, March 22nd, I will say that um, I've had some good conversations with Jen and Peer Review, and that seems to be going forward. 21st? 21st. March 21st, sorry, yes. <clears throat> for um, And that will be um, a continuation of our public hearing for the park and whatever other business we have. And um, I believe that uh, April 25th still is the tentative um, date for town meeting. Is that correct, Jen? April 25th? April 25th. Got it. Okay. With town elections May 2nd, and we have two members of our planning board who are running for re-election, Kathy Watroba and Emery Cloutier. Um, and I believe that's it for this evening, five minutes before nine. Are you waiting for me to move that we adjourn all the way from Sanibel Island, Florida? I move that we adjourn. I second. Thank you very much, Rachel, for your Florida. And Anne-Mary, thank you very much.